Now, in John chapter 16, verse 33, it says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Man, I'm about to go crazy here just reading these scriptures. Did you, did you hear what I said? He has overcome the world. He said, be of good cheer. Did he say be sad? Did he say be down, broken hearted? He said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Our Lord has overcome the world. Jesus is inside of you. Can you comprehend that? That Jesus, Lord of all, is living inside of you? You have everything you need right there inside of you. If you are a born again Christian, Jesus lives in you. You have the power to overcome whatever temptations come your way. The Lord wants us to be cheerful to be happy because we are His. Read the Scriptures. These Scriptures, they're full of power. If you let them be, if you read them and comprehend them for what they mean and take them into your heart and not just your head, you can live a victorious life. If you live by the Scriptures, if you understand the Scriptures, we don't have to live a defeated life. In Psalms 18.2 The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength in whom I will trust. My butler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. The Lord is my rock. Rock. He is the rock. He is my fortress meaning He is my divine protection. He is my divine protection. My buckler, meaning armor. He is my armor. He is what I need. And the horn, meaning strength and honor. He is my strength and honor. After reading these scriptures, if you don't go to bed tonight with peace, well, you better get your life right with the Lord and accept Him as Lord so you can receive these. Because a man without the Holy Spirit cannot understand what these scriptures are saying. But if you're a born again believer, you can receive these scriptures. The Holy Spirit will will show you how to take them. And once you have taken them that way, you can go to bed tonight and sleep. Proverbs eighteen ten, the name of the the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and is safe. The Lord is a strong tower. The righteous, His people, run to it and they are safe. Knowing who our God is changes your life. It totally changes your life. When you give your life to the Lord, in Corinthians when it says you become a new creature, you become a new creature. You no longer live a defeated life. You no longer are a slave to sin. And when the temptations come at you, you have the power, the power to turn away from them temptations. You know, we forsake the Lord. He doesn't forsake us. He's always there. Just like Israel did. They kept forsaking Him. He'd show Himself to them in mighty ways. Mighty ways. And then when times started getting tough, what did they do? They turned from God. God didn't turn from them. What are you doing? Are you turning to the Lord when troubles come? Or are you turning away from the Lord? We need to learn how to turn to the Lord in times of trouble. When my little girl went to be with the Lord, I did not turn my eyes away from Him. I did not have bitterness and blame God that she died. Because He showed me that she didn't die. He just took her from this earth. You, You have to start looking at things with your spiritual eyes. Spiritually, you have to look at what's going on around you. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 12. 
neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. If you're a baby Christian or a young Christian and things happen, you don't know what to do. What does it say? We don't we didn't know what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. We know we know this much. We know to look to the Lord. We do know that much. We might not know a lot of scriptures that we can stand on right now because we're just young Christians, but we do know to put our eyes upon the Lord. Psalms 20, verse 1. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of God of Jacob defend thee. The Lord hears you in the day of trouble. God will defend thee. I'm giving you so many scriptures here that you can that you can take, receive them, and have peace and have rest in your life. I tell you, I was going to give you a lot of scriptures because there's and there's probably more than what I got here. But if you read the Bible, you will find scriptures that will help you in whatever comes your way. Whatever you need, it's in the Bible. Read it. Matthew's fourteen. 27 but straightway Jesus spake unto unto them saying be of good cheer it is I be not afraid the Lord is, is he's always telling us hey be happy be happy be not afraid I am with you I am your father I will take care of you I have overcome death I resurrected from the grave death has no hold on me if I can defeat the devil in the grave, then nothing can touch me. Romans 12, verse 12. Rejoicing in hope. Rejoicing in hope. Patience in tribulation. Continuing instant in prayer. That's the way we should be. Rejoicing in hope. Being patient. When tribulation does come our way. Was the... Was Israel patient when they were down at the mountain waiting for Moses to come back? No. The Lord says, be patient. He will take care of it. He might take care of it quick. Or He might want us to go through something for a little while. But He's there to comfort us while we're going through it. He says, be continually in prayer. We should always be praying. That is one of the most powerful weapons the Lord has given us. That's prayer. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come on to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That one little verse. The Lord says, Come to me, all of you, all of you who know me, that are mine. Come to me, all you that are, are that are labored and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This is a promise. If we're heavy laden on about, about something, if we're down and depressed, we need to go to the Lord and He will give us rest. We need to believe this. If we're not going to believe the Word of God, then you might as well not even say you're a Christian because Christians live by the Word of God. We need to believe this. The Lord said, I will. He didn't say, I'll try to give you rest. He said, I will give you rest. Christ tells them to come to Him, to believe in Him. To trust in Him and Him only for salvation. Doing this and He'll give us the rest. Please hear the Scriptures. Please listen to the Scriptures here. If you're having problems in your life and you're heavy laden, listen to the Scriptures. Listen to what God is saying to you right now. Right now, if you didn't know this, right now, He is opening your eyes to His peace, to His rest. Romans 8, verses 35 and 36. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, meaning trouble, or distress, meaning hardship, or prosecution, meaning hatred, or famine, or nakedness, meaning exposed to danger, or pearl, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. 
Back in those days, it was nothing to kill Christians. Today, we get stoned, but in a different way. In a different kind of way. The way we get stoned now is by rejection. People don't accept us because we believe in God and we, don't, and we want to live a Christian life. But who can separate us from God? Who can separate us from Christ? The Lord says, not tribulation, not trouble, not hardship, not hatred. He said, none of these can separate you from me. He says that because because he's saying, I can take care of all that. That's not going to get in between us. That's what he's saying. That is not going to get in between us. I will take care of that. Because we're being hunted down. Just like they were back then. They hunted Christians. Just like Paul, before he became a Christian, he hunted Christians and killed them. Now some of us, tribulation may bring death. Just like in the, uh, in the time of uh, Jesus. The disciples. Stephen's was stoned to death for his belief. Now, there's some things we're going to have to go through. Like I said, the, it, the Lord says it rains on the just and the unjust. It doesn't mean we're going to have a perfect, beautiful life and nothing's ever going to hurt us. It's just when we go through it, God is with us. He will comfort us through the times that are hard, tribulation. I believe that when Stevens was getting stoned, he was praising God. And I believe, and God can do this, I, I don't have the scriptures, but I believe this. I believe that even though he was getting stoned, Stevens couldn't feel anything. Because God was, was, was with him. Just like when they threw the three guys into the, into the furnace. They didn't even get burnt. They were thrown in there to be killed, to be burned to death. Their hair on the body didn't even burn. God was with them. Please receive what I'm saying. Please hear what I'm saying. These are the word of God. We need to stand on them. We need to believe them, trust them, and stand on them. In fact, you need to listen to this tape more than once until you receive what God is saying to you. Now, the next four scriptures that I'm going to give you, they mean the same thing. In Psalms 9, verse 15, The heathen are sunk down in the pit, that they made, and the net which they hid and their own foot taken. Proverbs 26, verse 27. Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein, and he that rolleth a stone, it will, it will return unto him. Proverbs 28, 10. Whoso causes the righteous to go astray in an evil way, he shall fall himself into his own pit, but the upright shall have good things in possession. Ecclesiastes 10, 8 He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it, and whosoever breaketh a hedge, a serpent shall bite him. These all say the same thing, that when someone is digging a hole for the righteous man, to harm him, to trap him, the very thing that the unrighteous man is doing to the righteous. Right here the scripture says, he's the one that's going to fall into it. The one who digs a pit will fall in it himself. The one who breaks the hedge will have the serpent bite him. The one who rolls the stone will fall on his own head. Did you hear what I just said? The ones who try to trap us, the ones who try to harm us, whatever they're doing, the Lord says right here, that's what's going to happen to them. It's time like this that we get down and depressed. And when the enemy attacks us and we feel helpless, and you think you don't know how to handle it, but this is the spiritual law, that when it happens, woe unto him, or them, who is doing this. Because the verses say right here, that whoever's doing that to you, it's going to come on them. Whoever's trying to hurt you, however they're trying to hurt you, that's how they're going to get hurt. They dig a hole for you, they're the ones who's going to fall in it. This is the Word of God. This is the Word of God. Read these four scriptures. 
Praise God. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you hear what I'm saying? This is the kind of father we have. He takes care of us. You know, Satan is like a roaring lion. And he still has a big fight. Because billions of people are trapped in his temptations. They're trapped. They're trapped into money. They're money hungry. Power. You got people out there who have to have power. Pride. Hatred. And so on and so on. But we have a Lord that is much greater than Him. Than the devil. We have a Lord who can give us the power to escape those traps. We're not going to fall in the trap of being money hungry. We're not going to fall in the power under, under the trap of have, having to have power. Pride. Do you hear what I'm saying? These are all traps. But the Lord has said, that will not happen to you. They will fall into, into their own trap. Praise God. Isaiah 59:19. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Oh man, I can just holler sometimes. When the enemy comes in like a flood, when the enemy is just, just flowing upon you, and you feel him from every direction, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. You need to take this verse, write it down on your hand, write it somewhere where you can remember it. And whenever Satan attacks you, when he comes in like a flood, when in, when the enemy is attacking you, the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Praise God. I'm getting chills right now. Whew. Let me give you an example. Joseph. First his brothers. Joseph and his... Uh, Eleven brothers. There were twelve brothers. The eleven brothers didn't like Joseph. And they wanted to kill him. Now, I'm not going to go through the story. But they wanted to kill him. And they were, they were bad to him. They were very bad to him. They left him pretty much to die, really. Uh, where was that? Egypt. And there he became very... Uh, a spiritual, honorable man. But even there, the Potiphar's wife, she had the spirit of lust for him. And since he didn't give in to her with sex, she went and said that he had raped her or wanted her or something like that. And they put him in prison. But then they needed him. They needed him to interpret a dream. And he, and, and he was right under the king after he did that. His brothers wanted to kill him, wanted wanted bad for him. And what happened? He ended up being right under the king of Egypt. He had the honor. They meant bad for him. For Joseph, it ended up good. Moses in the Red Sea. It looked helpless. Pharaoh hated the Israel people. They had weapons. Jews had shepherd sticks. There, they were there to kill them. And what happened? They ended up being killed. Do you hear what I'm saying? Can you understand what I'm saying here? When someone has bad for you, the Lord is going to turn it around. Paul, Satan says, said that he would be shipwrecked and he would destroy him out in the water. When, when Paul was going across in the boat. It didn't happen. Satan had a snake bite him. What happened? The Lord didn't let it hurt him. In fact, our church got started right there in that area. In the last part of his life, when they chained him up in prison, when he was out preaching, every time they would put guards on him, they would get saved. Satan tried to destroy Paul. But every time, the Lord would use it to His glory. People would get saved. Every time Satan tried to destroy Paul, people would get saved. Do you hear what I'm saying? Things, you got to turn, not, not you, but, but when things attack you, the Lord knows how to turn it around to His glory. Now, the biggest turn of event was at the cross. When the, when the devil thought he had won, 
when he had almost all the people and the religious leaders turned against Jesus, yelling, Crucify him! Crucify him! This was the greatest falling in your own pit. I love it. Jesus had his eyes and faith and trust in God and believed God that he would take care of him. He went through all this tribulation and what happened? He came out glorious. He resurrected on the third day. He had the victory. He overcome death. Do you understand what I'm saying here? When God is Lord of your life, He can take care of you. He knows what to do. He'll turn things around. And the one who dug a pit for you will fall in it himself. So when Satan attacks you with drugs or alcohol, the Lord will free you from it. I know. I'm a testimony of that. The love of money for not having enough cause causes not having a, enough money causes depression for a lot of people. Or thinking if you're not well off as far as spiritual uh, material things, then you're a failure. If you can't keep up with the Joneses, this is Satan attacking. When someone dies, if they're a Christian, hey, I know you're going to mourn because you're going to miss them. But be have joy because they're with God. They're with God. The Lord will comfort you. Job, for men, if you're a Christian and truly looking for work, keep your eyes on the Lord and He will get you work. I know He will. He did it with me. He will get you work. If your eyes on the Lord, He will get you work. But in your heart, if you're lazy and you really don't want to work, then the Lord says, well, you don't want to work, then you don't eat. Now that can bring depression. You're bringing depression on yourself. For the women, the Lord shows in the Bible that He always He always had the security of a man for the woman. Now this is biblical. If you don't like it, well, I'm sorry. But this is the Word of God. If you're a woman, the Lord has always taken care of you through a man. First your father, and then your husband. If your husband dies, then you go back to your father. Or you go to the next male relative, whether it be your husband's brother, cousin, whoever. The next nearest relative from your husband should, is supposed to take care of you. And if there is none, then the church is the one who takes care of you. Because the tithe money is for three things. To support your preacher, to feed the hungry, and it says to take care of the widows. So the Lord has, has He's taken care of the women. You don't have to work. You don't have to work. If you're walking with God, He has a plan for you that you don't have to work. He has a plan that He will be there to take care of you, either through a relative or the church. Now, if you're going to a church that's living by the Word of God, a widow, the church is supposed to be taking care of the widows. If your husband dies, that church should be taking care of you. That's the Word of God. In John 14, 27, listen to what he says. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Listen to that verse. Listen to it. Peace I leave unto you. This is the Lord the saying, Peace I leave with you. Peace I will give you. Not as the world giveth. Because believe me, the world does not give you peace. Let your heart be... Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. The Lord keeps saying to us, Don't be afraid. The Lord is saying, don't be afraid. The more we know God, the more we'll trust in Him. The closer you get to God, the more you will trust Him to take care of the problems that come your way in your life. Remember, there is nothing out there that He can't handle. Nothing. Then the last verse, Matthew 28, 20. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever, whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, 
I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. I am with you always. The Lord is with you always unto the end of the world. Until your time comes or until the Lord comes and gets us. But He will be with us always. He will be with you always. You are never, ever, never, ever alone. If you're a born-again believer, you always have God right there in your heart, ready to carry you through whatever you need be you need to be carried through. Please, please listen to the words. These are the words of God. If you are a born-again Christian, you do not, you do not have to live a defeated life. You do not have to have depression into your in your life. You do not have to have um, unrest. God's rest is there for you. He is there for you. You are never alone. And you are always loved. If you're out there and you're listening to this, to this, to this tape and you think no one loves you, look to God. Look to the Lord. He loves you more than anybody here on earth could love you. God loves you. He loves you so much that He gave His Son to suffer tremendously and to die on the cross and then to be resurrected to defeat sin, to defeat the devil so we, so you can live a victorious life. He didn't do all that so we can live a, a life of, of sadness, of, uh, of depression, God did all that. Jesus did all that. So we could have victory in our life. So have victory in our life. Have victory in your life. Jesus is Lord. Greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. You repeat that to yourself over and over and over until you receive it. There is no reason for anybody out there to be lonely or depressed. Not if you're a Christian. Not if you're born again. Now, like I said, there's times when you might be sad about something, just like my little girl. Yes, I was sad that she was gone. But the Lord comforted me. He comforted me and saw me through it. He carried me through it. In fact, I had one guy tell me, man, I admire how strong you are in the Lord. <sighs> Excuse me, I did nothing. The Lord carried me through that time. He carried me through that time. I give myself no glory whatsoever because it wasn't me. Because if it would have been me, I would have died. So praise God. Go back. Read these scriptures and praise God. Get on your face. Get on the, on the ground and worship God because He loves and cares for us so much. Oh dear Heavenly Father, You are so good to us, Lord. And we need to start seeing, start receiving Your words and what they say and what they mean for us. Lord, You love us. You love us more than we can comprehend. Your grace and your mercy on us is... We don't know why you give it to us. But praise God you do. Thank you for these scriptures, Father. Thank you for these scriptures. They should lift us up. They should give us a rest that we've never had before. And God, you're the only one. You're the only one who can give us this rest. When the enemy comes in like a flood, you were there. To take care of us. You were there to lift up a standard against them. Thank you, Father. We love you. We love you. Thank you, Lord. That's all I know to say over and over is that we love you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray.